again I'm just going to show you now how to change this template file uh, into something that's a bit more like a game so first of all I'm going to save it with a different name we're going to just turn it into a very simple bat and ball type game so if we start off um, just checking at the beginning of the program there's a few things that we need to add I want to first of all change the the title to bat and ball let's change my comment as well while I'm here now I want a few other things to be defined uh, initially as well uh, I'm going to define a speed it's going to be 1 comma 1 so it's going to move one the ball that is it's going to move one pixel uh, right and one pixel down initially uh, I need to tell it how big I want the ball to be so basically it mean, that means that we're going to have a square of size 40 by 40 and within that square we're going to draw a circle with radius 20 uh, we also need the bat size that's going to be 64 pixels wide, 12 high. I'm also going to set a thing called bat gap, which is how far from the bottom of the screen uh, the bat's going to appear. Okay, I can leave all the colours as they are, that's fine. Um, so I need to just do a couple of things here. So I've got my screen wrecked. Actually, I think I would prefer that without an underscore because I tend to get a little bit confused. I don't know why I did that. Um, what I want to do is make the mouse invisible, the mouse pointer. Okay, so all I need to do for that is pi game dot mouse set visible. Set it to false. Okay, so now somewhere in here, just before I get to the main loop, I need to set up my bat and ball uh, objects. So so the bat's very simple. We just go bat surf equals pi game surface. That size. So this is going to make a little rectangle that size. We use the surface, by the way, because um, you can draw things directly onto the, the graphics window that you're using, but it's, the program runs faster if you make an, its own little surface uh, to draw to. So I'm going to fill that with green so that my bat is green. Uh, I'm going to make a bat rect which will help me to identify where the bat is bat surf get rect then we can make the ball which is a little bit more complicated so ball surf equals pi game surface all size and I'm going to actually do something called set color key to this because what will happen is it will draw the circle that we want um, with a black background and I don't want that to be visible so I do set color key black which means that black will be transparent and then I need to actually draw well first of all I need to create a rect for that then I'm going to draw the ball so ball equals pi game dot draw 
dot circle. Then I have to pass in the surface that it's going to be drawn on, which is the ball surf. Uh, the colour, which I'm going to set as blue. I need to set in a pair of coordinates. So it's going to be ball rack center x by ball rack center y and finally the radius ball rad. Now I'm going to put the bat in the center of the screen just up from the bottom so bat rack center equals screen rect dot center x so it's going to be in the middle going from left to right but it's going to be back gap pixels up from the bottom okay now I'm going to make a little text object that's going to pop up if we let the ball slip off the screen first of all I need to define a font going to choose the default font by saying none and make it quite large then I can actually render the text it's just going to say game over then I can pass in another couple of parameters. True means it's going to be anti-aliased, which just makes it appear nicer on the screen, and red is going to be the colour. That's going to be direct as well. And I'm going to position it in the centre of the screen. So, after that, most of the uh, bits and pieces are there. I've got the timer, I can move on to the main loop now. So, after, just after the event handling, I'm going to move the bat to follow the mouse. So, just go, put a little comment in here. So I'm just going to first of all get the position of the mouse so that will return um, a, a, a two element list the x and the y coordinates but I'm only interested in the x because I don't want the bat to move up and down just side to side. So I choose element zero of that pair of values. Then I'm going to move the ball. So uh, all I need to do for that is to say ball rect that's wrong way around plus equals speed zero. So that's going to move it into the uh, shift across that we've got at the moment. Center Y so that's going to use the second element in that list, the speed list, to move it either up or down depending on where we are at that point in the game. Now I need to do some collision detection. So I'm just going to say if ball right dot left is greater than or equal to bat rect dot right and ball rect is greater than or equal to bat 
right left so that should cope with any situation where they're overlapping then I want to just check if they're at the right height so if ball rect if the bottom of the ball is exactly level with the top of the bat then speed one So we're going to move it, make it go upwards instead. I'm going to do it like this. I'm just actually flipping the value over, which just looks a little bit more clear what's happening rather than setting it to an unusual number. Um, so then I'm going to check if to see if the ball's going off screen. So uh, if it's going off screen, we're going to change the, the left and right movements or the up and down movements. Um, if so, if the left of the ball is touching the very right hand edge, sorry, left hand edge of the screen, or Ball rect right is greater than the right hand side of the screen. Oops, then we're going to flip the left and right speeds. So that's speed zero equals minus speed zero. So whether it's going left or right, that'll just swap it over. Um, then we need to just see what happens if it's uh, going off the top of the screen. So if ball wrecked top is less than zero, because the, the computer sees the top of the screen as, as zero on, as a, on the x, uh, sorry, on the y coordinate, then we're going to just reverse that again, reverse the up and down part of the shift. But if it's going off the bottom, then we're going to print the game over. So if the ball rect top is greater greater than screen rect bottom, then we're going to blit the text of the screen, screen dot blit. So we pass in the the rect which holds all the information about where the actual uh, text should be. Okay, now we need to blip the, the bat and ball to the screen because what's basically happening is that every cycle through the game, through the loop, uh, it's filling the screen at once again with, with our colour yellow. So anything that's on there gets obliterated. So what we do then is we redraw the bat and the ball in the new positions. And because it's going at 100 frames a, a second, it looks like it's moving. It's like a animation technique, like when you used to draw little pictures on a on a little book and flip the pages over. So screen blit, ball surf, ball wrecked. And that ought to work, but uh, I will just check it because I'm not quite sure if I've made any typing errors. So, yep, I have made something wrong. Okay, <laughs> so something's wrong with my text rendering there. I'll just sort that out. So 
sometimes you do get a little bit of a problem with uh, Pi game when you've with idle sorry when you've used Pi game. So uh, if we go back to that. Yeah, I think I've put in an extra Pi game now when I didn't need to. So there we go, I've got a bat and a ball. Let's see if the collision detection is working. Yeah, it's bouncing off the bottom of the bat. It's a bit laggy because I'm capturing the screen and it's not a very fast computer. If it goes off the bottom, it says game over. So, and as you can see, the mouse pointer is not there when I'm on the window, but it does appear if I go off. So that is a very simple game, but it just shows you some of the things that you can do with Pi Game and. Uh, hopefully will make you want to learn some more so stay tuned for the next video coming soon